Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I want to show you how to load JSON into your website using Ajax or an XML HTTP request. So this means you're actually able to load JSON dynamically into your pages without refreshing the page. So right here I have an index.html file which looks like this in the browser. All right. I've also got a data.json file which looks like this. And this is in the same root directory as the HTML file. This contains a few JSON properties such as status, moves made, and also players. This represents basically just a simple game state of some imaginary game I've made up. So we're actually going to just uh, load this JSON document into this HTML file and make it usable like a regular native JavaScript object, all right? We can start by creating an XML HTTP request. So inside here, I'm gonna declare a new constant. I'm gonna call this one XHR equal to a new XML HTTP request object, all right? And this right here is gonna actually make the request and then give us a response. So this is actually an object which goes through states, okay? Now one of the states is actually called the loaded state. So when the request has been loaded and received, we can define a function which handles that. We can do this down here by setting a function to the onload property. Let's say xhr.onload, okay, is equal to a function, all right? This function will execute whenever the um, response has been loaded. For now, let's just say console.log and then pass in this. This will log out to the console this. Now this refers to this XHR object. All right. So now down here, let's actually just set up the request. We can do this using the open method. So down here, let's say xhr.open, okay? This will take two arguments, the first one being the method of the request. In our case, it's gonna be a get request. So put get inside there. The second argument will be the URL. In our case, it's gonna be data.json, all right? Let's say data.json inside there. We can now send out the request and wait for a response, which will be handled by this function right here. Down here, let's say xhr.send, okay, call that method right there. I was to save this and then refresh the browser. What do we get? We'll refresh and we get an XML HTTP request object logged out to the console. If I was to expand this, we see a few properties and methods inside here. We're actually after the response text property. This contains the actual response body from the server. In this case, it's going to be the JSON file in text form, as you can see right there. All right. So now, if I was to say, instead of this, I'm going to say console.log, and then I'm going to say this.response text instead. Okay. If I was to save this and refresh the browser, this time we see we get the actual JSON file in the console. So we're halfway there, all right? But what if I was to change the um, URL to something like data1.json, so a non-existent file. If I was to save this and refresh the browser, this time we see we get the default Apache 404 error page HTML. So we can actually prevent this, or I guess get around it, um, by checking the response status code. This is a 404 status code. We see a 404 right there. In the Chrome Network tab, we see this XHR gave us a status of 404, okay? Now, 200 status is the default um, success status. So. We're gonna check if we get a status, um, the response status of 200 okay. And only then 
we'll log out the response text. Okay, so back inside here, let's make a check for the status of 200. We can say if this and then call the status property, okay, is equal to 200. So if it's 200, then console.log the response text. Okay, if it's not 200, like in this case right here, so if it's not 200, else we're going to say console.warn, so calling the warn method, we're just going to say did not receive uh, 200 OK from response. Okay, so if I was to save this and refresh the browser, this time we get did not receive 200 OK from the response. So we're actually, I guess, um, just covering up for that issue right there. Let's make this back to data1, sorry, just data.json. So back to the existing file. Saving this gives us this right here, back to the original result right there. So now, this is actually a JSON object or a JSON string, should I say. It's a string representation of a JSON object. So it's in its serialized form. We can actually convert this into a native JavaScript object using the json.pass method. Now this method could potentially throw an error. So we can actually we can actually um, wrap this next code inside a try catch block to I guess handle that potential syntax error. Okay. Inside the try block, let's create a new constant, and this will actually be the native JavaScript object of this JSON object. Let's say const and then call this one response object resobj equal to JSON in all caps dot pass. So calling the pass method, we're going to pass in this dot response text. So we're passing in the serialized string form of the JSON document inside this pass method, it's going to do its magic and then give us a native JavaScript object called resobj. Now if this fails, it's going to throw an error. Now we can catch this error, I'm right, going to type out e inside here. If we get an error, we're going to say console.warn once again and say there was an error in the JSON uh, could not pass, something like that. Okay, so now let's just get rid of this um, this log statement. So now, if the JSON has errors, we're gonna see this warning message. Otherwise, we have converted this object successfully. We can now console.log the response object. Okay, so now saving this and refreshing the browser, gives us this result right here, a native JavaScript object of that JSON document. All right, so perfect. Now, what if I was to go back inside here and mess up the syntax of this JSON file? Let's get rid of that right there and put a few dollar signs, sevens, random characters, just like that. If I was to save this and refresh the browser, we actually get a message there was an error in the JSON could not pass so it's preventing that if the JSON is not valid JSON all right let's make that normal once again okay so now we have now I guess we've reached our goal of having the native JavaScript object all right let me show you how this thing actually works so you can actually say something like this let's just say want to actually print out the status or let's say we want to actually alert the status of this JSON object. Inside here, let's say alert, okay, so calling the window.alert method, we're going to alert out something like response object dot status. So dot status refers to this status property. We're going to alert the response object dot status, okay? Let's get rid of that. I to save this and refresh the browser, we see we get the alert message in progress, which happens to be the value of this status property right there. This is a native JavaScript object to be used for your application. All right, and that's how you can use uh, Ajax to load JSON dynamically 
inside your websites. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.